Welcome back, everybody. This is Zach with New Angle Sports Talk, and today we are recapping the 2019 draft profile for Kevin Porter Jr., six foot six, 213 pound freshman guard out of USC Trojans. I like the Trojans, but uh, USC and fantastic player this one was actually a requested video from ken miles so thanks for the recommendation ken really appreciate it guys if you have somebody you want me to review i've got a list of guys i still want to review before we start doing mock drafts and stuff but if you have somebody that you want to see leave me a comment let me know i'm in the comments i'm looking at them and i'm responding to them but if you have somebody that you want to uh, see or want me to review go ahead and leave it in there that way i know and i can put out something that you want to watch right so let's get started with ken kevin porter jr i call him ken i don't know why i called him Ken. Kevin Porter Jr. Again, six foot six guard out of USC. He's got a fantastic, excellent build, NBA ready. He's young. This is exactly the type of player that gets drafted either really late in the lottery or just outside the lottery and, and, and before the end of the first round, like the last couple of picks of the first round, right before that. Yeah, you know, this is the type of guy that just looking at his pros here, and we'll go over this in just a second, but just looking at his his pros, you know, he's he looks the part really well. He's got a young, he's got a good build, he's strong. Like I said, he's got 213 on him, 213 pounds on him. He's good. He's gonna be coming in really well. But not only that, he's got the build for it, but he's also got the shooting as well, too, that he needs. He's a good shooter from three, good shooter from mid-range as well, and he's a good finisher around the rim as well. Not only around the rim, though, can he finish with a little English on the glass, but he can also he's also a big time dunker, too. He's a really good dunker as well. You're gonna see that all in these highlights here. He can dunk it and he can lay it down really on anyone. And now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know what lay it down means, but I think I just made that up, guys. So uh hope you like that one. That one's a free one for you. Anyways, he's a good time, big time dunker, fantastic shooter, good finisher around the rim, like I said. Also, he's a really willing rebounder as well, too. I've noticed he's got good rebounds. Um, I believe in a, the analytical side of it, over a 42, a 48 minute uh, stretch, he would average seven rebounds a game if he was playing 48 minutes a game, obviously. So fantastic rebounder, really puts himself in a good position to get rebounds, boxes out well, that kind of thing. And it really shows good hustle on that as well, which you don't always see with young players showing good hustle on the rebounding side, but he does a really good job at that. And that's really one of his pros. And again, that comes back to his physicality. He's a good, strong build. He, he's, he, he doesn't mind getting rebounds and he can dunk it really well. And honestly, going back to his dunking, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the dunk contest this year. That's a that's a that's a way too early prediction but typically those guys in the dunk contest get elected who are like freshmen or, or like, not freshmen but like rookies i mean in the in the in the league or the second year usually it's really young guys obviously so i would not be surprised i'm putting money on it kevin porter jr is uh is probably going to be in the dunk contest next year guys but anyways uh, let's talk about his growth areas. So he's got a several things that he needs to really grow on. Again, these are not weaknesses or whatever. These are just growth areas. Th this guy's a fantastic basketball player because he does have some parts where he needs to improve his game. Does not make him a bad pick whatsoever, but he does have a negative assist to turnover ratio. We've seen this in a few of the players that we've reviewed as well already. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, guys, go back and check those out because you're going to really enjoy them, I hope. But he does have a negative assist to turnover ratio, which has got to come with just more maturity, more repetition with the game, getting more comf comfortable with your team. There's a whole bunch of things, and I think that's going to improve really well once he takes some time with his game at the next level. And I'll kind of explain that in just a second as well. Now, he does have, he's honestly really, he has, he has a terrible free throw percentage. I'll just be blunt with you guys. He's got a 52% free throw shooting uh, percentage. Not good, especially with a dude who can light it up on the offensive side like he can at will sometimes with the limited, limited minutes that he's been getting uh, at USC. It's not cool to see him with 52% free throw. He's got to improve that. There's a lot of guys in the league, in the NBA, that don't have as good a free throw percentage like they should. For example, Russell Westbrook, LeBron James. But those guys have freakishly athletic ability, right? Those guys can get past it, and they're not that bad. They're not at 52% uh, like Kevin Porter Jr. is at the free throw line. But it also might just be an issue with him getting, again, more repeti repetition, more acumen into the league, and getting more comfortable with his shot and his stroke. Uh, because that actually brings us into the third growth area as well. 
He does have some off-court issues, and also he had some had an injury issue as well too last year. He only played 21 games last year and only started four of them as well. Part part of that was the injury to his uh, his his muscle and his leg. It's basically the the muscle that goes vertical uh, straight through your, right above your kneecap, basically is what it is. And he aggravated that again. So he, he was out a few games. He came back, played four minutes, re-aggravated the knee injury and then or leg injury, whatever, and then. Uh, was out again for for a period of time as well until he came back. Now he did come back, but he was suspended for a period of the, of the year with off court issues as well. Um, according to what I was reading here, it was uh, basically just conduct issues as well. Whenever he gets drafted, that's not going to fly, especially with a young player um, who's also got. I'm not going to say he has injury issues, but he does. If if he does have injury issues. On top of that, with off-court issues, it's not going to fly. Like no teams are going to keep you around if you if you have both situations. A lot of teams will take you with injury issues. Like for example, uh, Denver took Michael Porter Jr. last year, which I loved. By the way, I loved that they, that he picked him up. But he's got injury issues, and they're being very very patient with him, letting him grow his game. Once he's ready, he can play or whatever it is. Uh, another report came out that he has a foot injury, but that's kind of another subject for another day. But anyways, Michael, uh, Kevin Porter Jr., rather, um, you got to just make sure you're conducting yourself professionally, well at all times, and make sure that you're treating your body uh, with... Now, this is, the, this is what makes your money, right? Your body does. Yeah, your ability, but your body has to have the ability to make you that money to be able to play the big game of basketball at a high level. You've got to take care of it, and I think you will. I think it was just a freak injury, but I just needed to mention that as well, too. Um... We're going to talk about Nexus key matchups as well. Uh, the Probably the biggest one that I had seen was just the season opener versus Robert Morris. The reason why I picked this one is because he was so efficient in such limited amount of time as well. 15 points in 24 minutes on 6 of, sh- seven, six of 7 shooting. Excuse me, Fantastic stat line for him. Again, he can light it up at will it seems like uh, when he's playing, when he's on the court, when he's not injured, that kind of thing. For his 2018-2019 stats, uh, I'll put those on the screen just like usual. Nine and a half points per game, four rebounds, one and a half assists a game, and 47% free throw shooting. So I know that he didn't reach double digit scoring, but again, a lot of that had to do with injuries, off the court issues as well, and also just getting his repetition and getting his spot in the rotation as well, where he only started four games, right? So that'll change a little bit, I think, in the next round or in the next uh, the next league that he plays in, which is. I think it'll change in the NBA, obviously, but you know it's something that he's going to have to grow and really, really hone in his skills on and being more efficient. He shot 47%, so it wasn't like he was a bad free, a bad shooter at all. My ceiling that I have for him, and I don't... This one was really tough. I know I always say that on every video because they are kind of tough to compare players that, you know, he had a limited, limited action in the, in the NCAA. Now comparing him to an NBA vet is actually pretty difficult, but... From what I'm seeing here, I think he's going to be more of a 3 and D guy because he's not bad defensively either. Ceiling would probably be a Danny Green or Courtney Lee. Now, he has always idolized James Harden. Does he turn into James Harden? Well, that's up to him, right? I don't know. Uh, let's see if he does or not. So that was it, guys. That was my comparison video for him, my draft profile review video for Kevin Porter Jr. out of USC. He's going to be a fantastic talent, guys. Let me know what you thought about Kevin Porter Jr. and leave your comments in the description below. And let me know who you want to have review next, guys. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.